Now you might have noticed that as we've gone through this, this canvas is already getting messy, and this is a really small script. You can imagine that as you keep building, things will get, uh, turns into a spaghetti junction. So it's critical, and really trust me, this is really worth your time to, um, to group and clean your scripts. So let's go through that really quickly. So we already showed how using relays, like this base point and this width, help kind of contain um, my script. So for example, I can think of all this as one, one chunk of code. Well, because it's one chunk, let's group them together. So if I do control G, it's actually what happened here. This now allows me to select everything in that group. So I've grouped them together. If I wanted to say, remove an object from a group, I can right click. Right, once the object is selected, I right click anywhere in the group and I can say remove from group or add to group. I can change the color of the group. So very often people will set uh, different um, colors to mean different things. So maybe the inputs are red, the outputs are green, you know, you, you decide what you want. I tend to simply um, make everything uh, white except for key objects. So for example, if I wanted a my output surface to be highlighted, maybe I want that to be uh, red. I will change this color to red. Now, um, just to identify it, if I want, and I would also do the same with my key input values. So maybe um, this is my major input, so I could highlight that. Now notice it didn't turn red, it turned white. Well, if I want red to be the color that I want, I want that exact same red. If I right click on this group, I can do make color default. And to ungroup, you can either delete the group or uh, remove from group. So now that's my default color. Now when I create a group, it is red. I want to point out, if I wanted this to be a part of this group, and I just simply click Add to Group, notice it's a pinkish color. It's the order of operations matter. So in order to make this red be within the other group, I'm actually going to first set this my default color, because as soon as I delete this, I want to make sure that white is the color I'm going to make. Now when I group it, you see that it works nicely. So I would recommend that you set up a template file that has the colors that you tend to need, and I usually do up in my upper right-hand corner here. Um, so that way you can very easily say, I want to create a red group. You just make that your default color, and now you can highlight an object, or vice versa, make that white group your default. So for example, maybe I want my base point, I want all of these together. And now let's say uh, that I want to, um, I'm going to make this guy, okay, I'm actually going to simplify my script. I'm going to um, I'm going to just make a normal width because it's going to help with grouping. So that was fun and all. But I no longer want to use my fancy math. So we're going to delete this, and we're simply going to, just going to have a basic range, and this here is my width. Well, right now that it's called number slider, so I would encourage you to name your key inputs, so that way when you come back to it, you know what's what. So this here, I'm going to call width, and then I'm going to make it red. Perfect. And here, I've already lost track of what is what. Well, this number slider is my x. This is my z. I actually don't need the Y anymore because the Y is being defined by uh, this range. So here are my major inputs. Again, if I want to clean them up, you can align them. Now, as soon as I zoom out, I can no longer tell what anything is. So there's a really cool thing called Scribble. This allows you to generate text in your Grasshopper Canvas to give nice uh, titles. So maybe I want to call this uh, inputs. I notice as I zoom out, it's a little hard to read still. I strongly encourage you all to keep this up even as large as, say, 60 or above. Might look pretty big at first, but as you get to larger scripts, notice that that is still clearly visible even from far away. I'm able to say, oh, that's inputs. And uh, I'm going to label this group over here, create square from base point. 
some kind of basic description to explain what this is doing. I can even add that text to the group. So now as I'm going around, I can understand, oh, this whole section of code, I create a square from a base point. All right, whatever you might want to do. Uh, and this is very useful. Uh, trust me, it's super useful as you go because you may find that as your scripts get larger and larger, you won't even know what it was that you were doing. And certainly none of your colleagues will. And what's very powerful about parametric modeling and Grasshopper in general is that it, to recreate a bit of code, it's just as simple as copy paste. And now you can reuse it. You can copy uh, bits of code from one section of a separate file, copy it into a new Grasshopper file. You can reuse sample files. You can reuse other people's scripts. But you can only reuse it if you can understand it. And notice as well that um, I already organized this script quite well. But what if this relay wasn't here? What if it was out somewhere randomly? And this was my group. Notice that I have multiple while wires entering my script. This is bad practice because I don't know what is coming into this. I don't know what this bit of code needs. I would have to go through and interrogate to say, okay, what's that wire? That's a base point. What's that wire? It's another base point. Um, anytime you have a group that's supposed to define a section of code, I would strongly encourage you to very clearly locate and label all the inputs that that group requires. So notice now I have one input, like I have no random wires going into the middle of my code. Instead I have a few wires, they're all labeled. So this bit of code takes a base point, in fact I might want to rename this, it takes a base point and it takes a width and it's going to output a surface. So I might even want to have a relay that really labels what this is. I'm going to call this surface. Um, this might seem like a lot of extra work, uh, but it really does pay off down the line if you just become in the practice of grouping and labeling. So the rules that I often uh, try to encourage others to follow is group everything. It really does help clarify things. Uh, label big and often with this sort of text, again, so that you can see it from out here. Coloring key items, especially key inputs, makes it much more um, readable, especially if you're trying to encourage others to uh, use it. Uh, also, a nice little touch is to number your steps. So check this out. If I made this one, and now let's uh, group it. And you can change it from a square, say if I want it to be a blob, so often I have it. I might say, all right, this is step one, and I'll copy it and say, maybe down here, this is step two. Consider if you were trying to review this script for the very first time, and you didn't know what was going on. Okay, step one, inputs. Step two, you come down here. So numbers are really, really useful. Um, another thing that I like to do is adding basic panels. So here we were labeling with um, big text. You can also label your groups. If you right click on the group itself, you can give it a title. I don't like this personally because you see how small it is and it goes away. You can't see it. It's really a, not a good way of labeling groups. I strongly encourage you to do larger text. Um, but sometimes you need an explanation. So it's very useful just to drop in a panel and to type some random text to explain what's going on. This is very much like um, writing in pseudocode if you're a textual programmer, kind of giving you hints as to what you're thinking of. So maybe here I'll say, uh, here we create a square from a single base point. You know, whatever you want it to be. Um, I'll often include actually quite a lot of um, text. And this is useful both for me looking back to well, what was I trying to do here, um, but for others to learn as well, especially with more complicated scripts, this kind of um, record makes it much, much easier for others to understand what was that you were trying to do. Because then if there's an issue or a bug or some kind of thing that you need to update, it's going to be a lot easier to interrogate the code, understand what was happening. So running through those rules again, group everything, label big and often, color key items, like inputs and outputs, number your steps, and describe the logic in panels. And that will get you uh, a nice clean uh, script. And I'll throw in one more, um, have clear inputs and outputs for all your groups. Try to use relays to label and clarify all the inputs to every group. And a good way of checking that is if you select a group and move it, you should not have any random wires entering that group. 
every every wire that enters a group should enter at a clearly defined relay. That's good practice.